What happens when humans begin combining biology with technology? It is the power to recode life itself. We will see human organ farms, governments using artificial wombs to rebuild populations, robots with biological parts. There will be genetically altered humans who are able to heal people through touch, and so much more. This is the world of biotechnology. But what happens to our environment when humans begin to engineer life and they become an invasive species? And what is going on underground in the labs of biohackers hidden from regulations? And if human bodies are bioengineered, would we evolve into a new species of life altogether, becoming less human and more alien? Humanity will no longer be observers of nature, but the masters of it. This is the next phase in humanity's evolution, and it begins with bioprinting. Bioprinting is 3D or even 4D printing, but instead of plastic or metal, it uses living cells called bioinks. These cells are printed layer by layer and can grow and connect with each other, creating biological structures. With bioprinting, we're not just creating objects, we're breathing life into them. Bioprinting is the alchemist's dream come to life. Some basic level uses include bioprinted eyeball corneas, bioprinted hair follicles for hair loss, personal cosmetic testing, and combat wound healing. And traveling further into the future, more advanced bioprinting will achieve 3D printed coral reefs that provide habitats for marine life, helping to restore damaged ecosystems or small-scale robotic space stations that are bioprinting factories, since printing with liquids is more effective when done in a microgravity environment. When it comes to the human body, bioprinted organs are manufactured in organ farms to overcome the challenges of donation shortages, or a patient's own cells are used to create miniaturized organs or organoids that are used to test medical responses before actual administration and bioprinted prosthetic limbs that are designed to fit perfectly to the individual, using living tissue to improve integration with the host's body. Experiments are carried out in the field of cybernetics, where electronics are implanted into bioprinted pieces, creating cybernetic organs that are more advanced than natural ones, such as bioprinted lungs that are implanted with sensors and nanofilters that remove toxins from the air before it enters the bloodstream, or replacement bionic eyeballs that have built-in zoom or infrared vision. Patients of these experimental bionic eyeballs begin to claim they are having paranormal visions. After losing his sight in an accident, a former archaeologist receives a bionic cornea transplant. With his restored vision, he starts having visions, hallucinations, claiming to see the past and believing he has unearthed hidden secrets that could rewrite history. On the other side of the world, an unknown flesh-eating disease is wiping out regions of a country. A group of scientists use bioprinting to create a new type of skin that can survive the disease. Some people praise the scientists' efforts, while others question whether these people with a different type of skin are still part of the human race. Coming back to more basic biotechnology, there is the world of living architecture, where buildings are constructed with bioengineered materials that can self-repair, clean the air, absorb pollutants, and even reproduce. These buildings are also built using gecko-inspired adhesives and coral reef-inspired eco-concrete. Some of these new age buildings are even powered by biological batteries that use components such as bacteria to store and generate energy. But there are complaints of forced obsolescence, where companies are manipulating their biomaterials to deteriorate after a set period of time, forcing customers to continuously purchase replacements. High up in these bio-buildings, inside luxury apartments, walls are decorated with pieces of bio-art. Artists use living tissue and bioprinters to fabricate living and evolving works of art. These city bio-apartments that are near the ocean are protected from rising sea levels and storm surges by living seawalls. Genetically engineered corals and mussels are used to create living seawalls that grow and self-repair, protecting these coastal cities. And then there are bioluminescent lights, plants, bacteria, and algae that are engineered to glow in the dark, just like deep sea creatures, replacing electric street lights. But in a small town where bioluminescent lamps light the streets and purify the air, a sudden decay of the bioluminescent organisms causes darkness to fall. It is up to botanists and engineers to figure out what is killing the neon bloom and restore light to the town. Conspiracies spread that the lights have been biohacked and reprogrammed to release harmful pollutants. 
Elsewhere, a robotics company has built a robot with a bioluminescent skin that glows. The company tests using the robot in a museum, guiding people around the exhibitions. People question if human skin is next. Underground, biohackers are already a step ahead and are experimenting on their own bodies. Cyberpunks and biohackers work underground, hidden from government regulations. They experiment with implanting microchips into their arms and tattooing themselves with digital inks that display and shows off their online wear. They hack together and build biocomputers made from biomaterials and living neural tissue. Cyberpunkers hack and tune brain chips, disabling safety features for more extreme and unauthorized neural experiences. And they use their own DNA as storage devices, mimicking nature, able to store massive amounts of data. Under the city streets, there is a black market of New Age substances. Biohackers engineer grapes that ferment into wine within minutes. And they create unregulated food that are resistant to pests and disease and are allergy-free. The biggest buzz is around self-replenishing food containers. These containers are made of living organisms that constantly regenerate their contents, effectively providing a never-ending supply of microfoods. These biohackers also mess around trying to freeze each other, hoping to bring the bodies back to life. People call them cryonic punks, and they have pets with edited genes to produce bioluminescence, making them glow in the dark. And there are rumors of chimeras, animals created with genes from multiple species. The name chimera comes from Greek mythology, a fire-breathing creature with the body of a lion, the head of a goat arising from its back, and the tail of a snake. Out in the real world, corporations are making older, bionic prosthetic models obsolete, forcing users to upgrade, raising the question, who owns the limbs, the people, or the corporations? These bioprinted prosthetic limbs fully integrate with the body's nervous system, providing a sense of touch and more natural control. Militaries have voluntary amputations. Governments use bionic limbs to create super soldiers. A young boy, paralyzed in an accident, learns to walk again with the help of a bioexoskeleton. Every bionic prosthetic and bioexoskeleton comes with a registration tracking number. In government-controlled labs, scientists are testing advanced artificial womb technology. This includes pod devices designed for more reliable external pregnancy and gestation, a process known as ectogenesis. In a world plagued by infertility, artificial wombs have become humanity's hope. Wealthy individuals outsource childbirth to large womb farms. Governments facing population collapse have their own farms too. And conspiracies circulate of a dictator obsessed with his legacy, using artificial wombs to create numerous offspring, aiming to rule eternally and become an immortal dictator. Other fields that use artificial womb technology include space colonization, military use, and endangered species revival and there are experiments being carried out in the field of extended gestation, where a body is left in the artificial womb for a longer period of time to enhance natural, cognitive, and physical capabilities. The next multi-trillion dollar industry is in bio-hybrid robots. These are robots that are made with biological tissue, providing more flexibility and energy efficiency. One corporation is developing biomimetic robots that can blend in and camouflage with nature and even interact with animals. The corporation says that these bio-robots are for environmental monitoring or biological research. But there is a concern that they will unintentionally become an invasive species, disrupting ecosystems, leading to the extinction of native animals. While others worry that the bio-hybrid robots can be used for espionage and spying, such as drones or robots that mimic a bird so well that another bird is not able to tell that it's a machine. These types of robots can be used to breach sovereignty, where governments deploy invasive biohybrid animals to infiltrate and undermine the autonomy of other nations, while advanced biohybrid robots become capable of rapidly producing harmful bacteria and viruses. After a nuclear scale bio waste catastrophe, biohybrid robots immune to radiation are humanity's best chance at survival. They scavenge resources, rescue survivors, and clean up biohazard waste. The first bio-robot becomes a restorer of extinct animals, carrying DNA, and birthing lost species. These are the Neo-Humans, real-life X-Men. People, mostly biohackers, who are no longer considered human. They represent an entirely new species. 
After winning a bio lottery, this is the first person to become a human insect repellent. He inhaled an engineered virus that delivered the CRISPR components and targeted gene sequences into his skin cells and sweat glands, where pheromones are now produced that repel local disease-carrying insects. A singer has her vocal cords and resonating chambers bioengineered to produce an unhuman range of sounds, turning her into a living musical instrument. A biohacker becomes a living canvas, using biofabricated skin pigments that change in response to light, temperature, and mood, displaying moving images and art. People are able to grow food on their own bodies, and marine biohackers are hacking their own bodies with genes from marine animals, creating bioluminescence and gill-like enhancements to breathe underwater. There is a New Age Wolverine who is resistant to bone fractures thanks to bioengineered collagen enhancements and he is capable of rapid regeneration with human tissues that are engineered from reptiles and heal at an accelerated rate. People are bioengineering themselves to age backwards by manipulating telomeres and cell regeneration. A person claims to have the ability of splitting their consciousness by using organic brain augmentations to perform multitasking on an unprecedented level. And the first person is capable of healing others through touch by transferring regenerative cells. Biotechnology is the drafting table where nature's blueprint meets human design. It is the recoding of life itself. This is the next phase in humanity's evolution.